Good morning, and welcome to Scott Air Force Base. My name is Senior Airman Colin West, and I will be your narrator for today. As a reminder, today's ceremony is considered an outdoor event, and covers are required for military personnel. Today is a special day for the United States Transportation Command as the command is passed from General Stephen R. Lyons to General Jacqueline D. Van Ovost. Please welcome the personnel and commands participating in today's ceremony. Centered in front of the formations to the rear, the Commander of Troops, United States Transportation Command Chief of Staff, Major General Vincent Barker, accompanied by representatives of the United States Transportation Command Directors, Colonel Willie Cooper, Captain Jamie Frazier Loria, Colonel Stephen Putoff, Colonel Troy Pananon, and Colonel Paul Dismer. The groups in formation represent the United States Transportation Command and its components. From left to right, United States Transportation Command, commanded by Colonel Aaron Angel. Air Mobility Command, commanded by Colonel Mark Schulman. Military Service Deployment and Distribution Command, commanded by Colonel Joseph Morrow. Military Sea Lift Command, commanded by Captain James Polakowski. The Joint Enabling Capabilities Command, commanded by Colonel Demetria Walker. And finally, the Joint Transportation Reserve Unit, commanded by Colonel Tonya Ehler. Today's music is provided by the Air Force Band of Mid-America. The band is under the direction of Captain Justin Lewis. The presiding official for the change of command is the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III, the Secretary of Defense. Accompanying him is General Mark A. Milley, Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome our many distinguished guests who have joined us here today. Please hold your applause until the very end. The wife of the Secretary of Defense, Mrs. Charlene Austin. The wife of our outgoing commander, Mrs. Maureen Lyons. Their son, Dylan. Daughter, Kara, and her special guest, Aaron. General Lyons' sisters, Ruth and Nancy, and his brother-in-law, Terry. The husband of our incoming commander, Mr. Alan Frosch. General Van Ovos' parents, Hans and Joy. Her sister, Yvonne her sister Ingrid, her niece Emily, and her friend Mim. We would also like to welcome the Honorable Mike Bost, United States Representative for Illinois' 12th Congressional District. The Honorable Jerry Castello, retired United States Representative for Illinois' 12th Congressional District. The 11th Commander of the United States Transportation Command and former Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Retired Paul Selva the 8th Commander of the United States Transportation Command and 19th Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Retired Norton Schwartz and his wife Susie. The 6th Commander of the United States Transportation Command, General Retired Tony Robertson. The 9th Commander of the United States Transportation Command, General Retired Duncan McNabb. The Honorable Alan Estevez, presidential nominee to become the Undersecretary for Industry and Security in the Department of Commerce, and his wife, Susan Pearson. The Commander, Air Mobility Command, General Michael Minihan and his wife, Ashley. The Senior Enlisted Advisor to the Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff, SEAC Ramon Colon Lopez. The Deputy Commander, United States Transportation Command, Vice Admiral D. Mewborn and his wife, Carrie. Former Deputy Commanders of the United States Transportation Command, Vice Admiral Retired Andy Brown, and Lieutenant General Retired John Broadmeadow and his wife Karen. The Honorable Patricia Gregory, Mayor, City of Belleville. The Honorable Pat McMahon, Mayor, City of Mascouda. The Honorable Robert Wellmunster, Mayor, City of Shiloh. The Honorable Mark Kern, Chairman, St. Clair County Board. The spouse of the United States Transportation Command Chief of Staff, Mrs. Stephanie Barker. The former United States Transportation Command Chief of Staff, Major General Retired Jay Florinoy and his wife Anne. The United States Transportation Command Senior Enlisted Leader, 
Fleet Master Chief Donald Myrick and his wife Giselle. The former United States Transportation Command senior enlisted leaders, Chief Master Sergeant Retired Ken McQuinson, Chief Master Sergeant Matt Caruso and his wife Becky, and Chief Master Sergeant Retired Jay France and his wife, Senior Master Sergeant Retired Monica France. The commander, 375th Air Mobility Wing, Colonel Christopher Robinson and his wife Stephanie. And we would also like to welcome all other flag officers, general officers, senior executive service personnel, component commanders, civic leaders, directors, former directors, commanders, senior enlisted leaders, industry partners, retirees, family, friends, and all of their special guests in attendance with us today. In today's ceremony, we will be following the Navy's tradition of piping the side. It originated in the days of sailing ships from the way visiting captains arrived on board. Instead of climbing the ladders, they were hoisted aboard by a group of sailors called the Side Party, a title shortened in time to The Side and then Side Boys. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of our official party. General, United States Air Force, arriving. Transportation Command, arriving. Joint Chiefs arriving. Defense arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of troops will now present the command to the presiding official. Please remain standing for the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes and Honors March.
the Commander of Troops will now advance the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the advancement of the colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. The invocation is offered by Army Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Mark Sedwick. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, we give you all thanks and praise for the opportunity to participate in this ceremony today, a time-honored military tradition which is anchored to our nation's founding and connected to its deep, reverent, and rich history when the mantle of authority passes from one great leader to another. During these last 34 years, U.S. Transcom has faithfully answered our nation's call to project power and sustain the warfighter at the other end of the line of communication. During the last 18 months, U.S. Transcom has overcome the challenges of the pandemic to Charlie Mike to continue mission. In the last few weeks, U.S. Transcom has safely evacuated more than 124,000 civilians from the tyranny of Taliban rule to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness here in the United States and in other allied nations. During the last three years under General Lyon's stewardship, 
wounded military members have been safely evacuated from the battlefield to military hospitals. Fallen military members have been transported to the military mortuary at Dover Air Force Base, where honors have been rendered. The dedicated military members and civilian employees and contractors at Air Mobility Command, the Joint Enabling and Capabilities Command, the Joint Transportation Reserve Unit, the Military Sea Lift Command, and the Military Surface Deployment and Distribution Command have served as your chosen instruments to accomplish our many missions by sustaining the warfighter. For such a time as this, you place General Stephen Lyons at the helm of this great enterprise. He and Maureen have steadfastly devoted themselves to accomplish all the missions you have given to U.S. Transcom and also to integrate and nurture all military personnel, DOD civilians, contractors, and their family members into the U.S. Transcom family. Indeed, U.S. Transcom is a combatant command integral to our nation's security, but it's also a family, a family that General Lyons and Maureen have so capably led. And now, Lord God, we pray that you would bless General Jacqueline Van Ovost as she assumes command this morning. Grant her, we pray, an extra measure of your Holy Spirit as she prepares to build upon the foundation that General Lyons has so capably constructed. For such a time as this, you have called General Van Ovost and Allen to Charlie Mike to continue mission during this dynamic time in our nation's history, and we pray all of these things in your most holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The United States Transportation Command was established on 18 April 1987 and activated 1 October 1987. Initially, its mission was for wartime only. Following its successes in operations Desert Shield, Desert Storm, United States Transportation Command was, Command's mission was expanded to be the single manager of transportation for the Department of Defense in peace and war. Now, United States Transportation Command has evolved into a global combatant command with five unique trans-regional responsibilities. The successful accomplishment of these responsibilities allows U.S. Transcom to set, balance, and use the globe for logistics. In January, the President designated that the United States Transportation Commander is responsible for the joint deployment and distribution exercise, planning and operations across all domains, and will collaborate with other combatant commands, the services, and as directed with U.S. government agencies and commercial entities. In this capacity, the command is uniquely positioned to increase the agility, agility and lethality of the joint force, providing global reach, global perspective, and resource-informed mobility solutions. United States Transportation Command has proven its worth every day over the past three decades by supporting combat operations all over the world and participating in numerous humanitarian and disaster relief contingencies. United States Transportation Command will continue to support the nation and its allies in peace and war. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley. So good morning, everyone, and um, I want to thank everyone for being here. As you saw with the narrator, it took about 35 minutes to announce everyone's names. So I will refrain from announcing all the political leadership that we have, all the four-star generals, the sergeant majors, and I just want to welcome all of you here for a great day. Uh, and it really is a great day. Bittersweet in many ways to say goodbye to Steve Lyons, uh, but really great uh, to say hello to Jackie Van Ovos. And I want to tell you that for me, it's a great honor uh, to be here today as part of this ceremony, especially here at Scott Air Force Base with an incredible past uh, where it began in 1917 uh, during the First World War. It was here at Scott that it's one of the primary training fields for what was then known as the Army Air Service and then became the Army Air Corps 
eventually became the United States Air Force, the most powerful, most capable Air Force in the history of the world. And I just want to say it's a deep honor to be here at this air base. Looking out, I see a lot of friendly faces, people who've worked incredibly hard and shaped not just today's ceremony, uh, but Transcom and the incredible mission uh, that Transcom has every day. And I want to thank all of you again for being here, but most of all, the families. The families of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, Space Guardians, who all serve alongside those of us in uniform. And I want to thank all of you for being here today. And you are represented, most importantly, by the Lyons and Van Ovos families. I want to thank Maureen for 32 consecutive years of being by Steve's side. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, and he knows uh, that he would not be standing here today without you. So on behalf of all the families of Transcom and really all the families of the entire Joint Force, thank you very much. You know, our military spouses don't get paid for any of the work that they do behind the scenes or keeping everything going while we're away. And I know the men and women of Transcom are no strangers to this. So for Maureen, your service and sacrifice over the years, and to your children, Dylan and Kara, both literally born into the Army, I know your parents could not be prouder of you than they are today. Both of you have developed into exceptional adults. Kara, as many of you know, is a teacher, a special education teacher. And Dylan uh, has enrolled, as you can see by his uniform, he is now in his second year at the United States Military Academy. Uh, and he will be graduating, hopefully, fingers crossed, in a couple more years to don the cloth of our nation as a second lieutenant of the United States Army Infantry is the branch you will choose. <laughs> I know the top guy up there, so we'll, we'll help you out. Logistics is important, but infantry is where it's at. Remember that. And I do want to introduce what was last night Kara's special friend, what was this morning's Kara's boyfriend, and as of an hour ago is now Kara's fiance. Aaron Hale. Aaron, could you stand up, please, so that everyone can see you as the newly engaged Aaron Hale. I warned you. I told you we would do that. You're welcome, Mom. <laughs> and to Jackie Van Ovost and your family, her great husband, Alan, down here, and Tracy, her four daughters, Tracy, Kristen, Rebecca, and Megan, thank you, and, and her wonderful parents, Hans and Joy. Uh, thank you all for being here as uh, you embark on the next incredible chapter in her life. Uh, great people are not just born, they are built and shaped, and they are shaped by our families, and, and I know that you have each shaped Jackie into the woman and the leader that she is today. And I really want to thank everyone out here who is wearing the uniform and those that you represent. In this critical command, a command that has been operating for years and years, decades even, under the most challenging of circumstances, each of our 11 joint combatant commands plays an indispensable role in the national security of the United States. But it is Transcom. It is Transcom that is the workhorse, undeterred by anything and always ready to deliver. And we see that day in and day out, month in, month out, year in, year out. In just over two weeks, Transcom recently coordinated and executed a non-combatant evacuation mission that gave over 124,000 people an opportunity to live in freedom. This was the largest airlift by two times in all of history. Thousands of people all over the globe contributed, but it was Transcom who made it possible from the rapid delivery of our troops to the evacuation of all of those Afghans. For 34 years, 
Transcom has enabled the world's most responsive and strategic mobility capabilities on the ground, across the sea, and in the air. Today, Transcom's subordinate commands, the Army's Military Surface Deployment and Distribution Command, the Navy's Military Sea Lift Command, and the Air Force's Air Mobility Command form an incredible team of unbelievable talent. And each of you are marching in the boots, you're manning the bridge, you're flying in the cockpit of those that came before you. In the summer of 1944, the U.S. Third Army under General Patton moved rapidly across the European mainland following a successful invasion at Normandy. The rate of advance was more than 80 miles per week. And that rate of advance caused significant supply problems for the Allies. In response, a convoy system, a ground convoy system consisting of 6,800 trucks was established. And for 82 days, drivers of the famed Red Ball Express raced at high speeds to keep Patton's tanks stocked with fuel. At any given moment, 900 vehicles were on the roads of France delivering fuel to the forward edge of the battle. By November, the Red Ball Express had delivered half a million tons of food, fuel, and ammo to 28 U.S. Army divisions. History has shown that the immense maritime capabilities of Transcom. During Desert Shield and Desert Storm, Military Sea Lift Command transported the majority of the ground equipment via sea lift, over three million tons of cargo and seven million tons of fuel. Back again in the Second World War, your predecessors flew military transport aircraft across the Himalayan mountains, or the hump, as it was called at the time, to resupply U.S. Army Air Forces in China. And having overseen the operation, then Lieutenant General William Tunner, he remarked after the hump, those of us who had developed an expertise in air transportation knew that we could fly anything, anywhere, anytime. And that remains true today with Transcom. Whether by land, sea, or air, Transcom always delivers anything, anywhere, anytime. No other military, no other military in the world possesses these capabilities. And as much as our allies and partners know this, our adversaries watch Transcom very, very carefully. Whether across the snow-capped Himalayas, through the lowlands of Europe, along any sea, ocean, or waterway, or out of the mountains of Afghanistan, America's joint force can rapidly project power to all corners of the globe because of the logistical talent and skill of the 116,000 soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and, importantly, civilians of the United States Transportation Command. And our future, our future strategic advantage as the world becomes ever more dangerous, our overmatch capability will continue to rely on the logistical prowess and the ability to project power by Transcom at great distances. And Steve, you have demonstrated incredible steady leadership during a very challenging time. Steve led this command over the last three years, marked by a pandemic, humanitarian crises, weather disasters, wildfires, day-to-day -day movement of supplies and equipment across the globe to those 11 combatant commands, and of course, combat operations, including the most recent evacuations in Afghanistan. Steve, your performance has been nothing short of exceptional. And you're a hard act to follow, but there's not a single person out there who is more prepared to lead Transcom than Jackie Van Ovost. She has commanded an air refueling squadron, a flying training wing, and even the elite presidential airlift wing. Her breadth and depth of experience is unparalleled. She served as the vice director of the Joint Staff and also the director of mobility forces for U.S. Central Command. And, importantly, she just finished successful command at Air Mobility Command, the major 
subordinate command of Transcom, where she led an incredible team that includes 1,100 aircraft and 107,000 active duty guard and reserve airmen and civilians conducting global airlift, refueling, and air medical evac. Jackie, not only has your skill and talent, but I can tell you that we're incredibly proud and most importantly of your principles and your character. You are truly exceptional as well. The sky is the limit with Jackie Van Ovost. She will take Transcom into the future. She will take you to your next rendezvous with destiny, as we say in the Army. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce our Secretary of Defense, my boss, a man who I have fought with in combat on the ground, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. Well, good morning, everyone. It is great to be here in the land of Lincoln and to join all of you as we honor the distinguished career of General Stephen Lyons and salute General Jack Jacqueline Van Ovost as she takes command of Transcom. I'm happy to see so many friends and colleagues here, including from Congress, and also state and local leaders, and leaders from the Department of Defense, including General Milley and so many others. Thank you for your support of this great command and its mission. Let me extend a special welcome to the Gold Star family members who are here today. We all owe you a profound debt of gratitude and we will forever honor your loved ones who fell in the service of our country. Thank you so much for being here. I'm also delighted to welcome General Lyon's family, especially his wife of 32 years, Maureen and their daughter, Kara, whom I'm told, as the chairman uh, pointed out earlier, works as a middle school special education teacher. And their son, Dylan, is uh, proudly carrying on his dad's legacy as a cadet at my alma mater, West Point. You know, Steve was the first to sign up, but all of you served right alongside him. I know that it's been a labor of love but also a sacrifice, and the whole Department of Defense thanks you. And Maureen, let me congratulate you on the Distinguished Public Service Award that we'll present later today. You've earned it, and then some. Thank you for everything that you've given. I'm also delighted to welcome General Van Ovo's family, her husband of almost 30 years, Alan, and their four daughters, Tracy, Christian, Rebecca, and Megan. It's also an honor to have the General's parents here with us today, Hans and Joy. I know you must remember the General as a girl falling in love with aviation. So on behalf of us all, thanks for encouraging her and raising a mighty daughter. Also here to thank all of our forces who served so bravely throughout our long war in Afghanistan. And to the outstanding men and women of Transportation Command. Now, I'm not the world's most experienced logistician, but I am one of the world's most experienced consumers. So, I know that I'm looking right now at the people who make the American military move. On any given day, Transcom has some 115 rail cars moving DOD equipment. 
and 33 ships are getting underway, and 1,500 trucks are delivering cargo, and about every two minutes, a transcom plane is taking off or landing somewhere around the world, hauling supplies, refueling aircraft, or moving patients. That's what you do in ordinary times. But this past year was anything but ordinary. You had to keep the American military moving during an historic pandemic, and you delivered. You had to execute a complex retrograde in Somalia, and you delivered. And you had to conduct the largest non-combatant evacuation airlift in American history in Afghanistan, and you delivered. You know, the whole world saw Operations Allies Refuge, and they saw something that no other command can do, something that no other military can do. You conducted the largest NEO airlift in American history in just 17 days, and you didn't let maintenance or fuel or logistical problems get in the way, because there was a job to do and lives to save. So ladies and gentlemen of Transcom, take a bow. Now an airlift that huge would have been impressive under any circumstances, but you did it under combat conditions. You faced a grave and growing terrorist threat, punishing heat, no government, a ticking clock, and a dynamic and dangerous condition on the ground. And you put your heads down, and you got it done. You know, we always have the highest expectations for this command, but you really soared over them this time. We expected to evacuate some 70 to 80,000 people. You saved more than 124,000. And then you move them to intermediate staging bases and onward to new lives, including here in America. And I'll say it again, no other military could have done it. No other nation could have mobilized our partners in industry to answer the call to help and to serve. No other country could have pulled together its friends and common purpose this way. And that's all down to you. Our nation is the best in the, business, in the business because you are the best in the business. As the chairman iter, uh, pointed out earlier, our competitors and foes were watching this mission. And you can be sure that it gave them great pause. You showed them what we can achieve in short order. You showed them that no other country has the will, the capacity, and the constellation of allies and partners to tackle a mission this big. You know, some people would hear this kind of a challenge and say, that's just too hard. Transcom doesn't know the meaning of those words. You give the American military our legs and our wings. Logistics remain at the core concept, at, at the core of our warfighting concept, and of our ability to project and sustain combat power. And so that's why this command is central to our operations in the 21st century, and to our vision of truly integrated deterrence. And that means a very modern mix of technology and operational concepts and capabilities, all woven together and networked it means taking and making investments so that we can continue to deter conflict across every domain, throughout every theater, and from every foe. And it means finding bold and new ways to deploy and link things together that we already have. It means strengthening our bonds with the great force, force multipliers in, un, in our unrivaled global network of partners and allies and it means becoming even more agile 
more resilient, and more innovative. That's what General Lyons helped forge, first as a deputy and then as a commander of Transcom. A global transportation network that is stronger and faster than ever, and even more secure and hardened and sustainable. That's quite a legacy. And that's exactly what I expected of him, because we go way back. In 2003, we served together in the 3rd Infantry Division during Operation Iraqi Freedom. I watched him help move a mechanized division with tanks and Bradleys up to Baghdad. It was a logistical triumph. And since then, he has held almost every challenging logistics job in our inventory, in peacetime and in wartime. He is a wizard of logistics and a soldier's soldier. When COVID-19 hit, he didn't waste time. He kept our people safe on planes as they continued moving all around the globe. And by the way, the safety measures that his team set became the industry standard for commercial airlines. When America and the world called for help, he rallied his team to deliver everything from ventilators to vaccines. And after starting his career with one logistical miracle going up to Baghdad, he capped his career with another coming out of Kabul. And throughout, Steve has been the epitome of professionalism. I've seen him in combat, and he's unflappable, focused, thoughtful, and with ice water in his veins. General, it's been an honor. The whole department thanks you. And Charlene and I wish you and your family the very best in your next chapter. Thank you, Steve. Very well done. Now, General Lyons is a tough act to follow, but we have exactly the right person with General Jackie Van Ovost. She is a legend of a leader, and the American military is lucky to have her on the job. I know that she'll continue to push the envelope and exceed all expectations, because that's what she's always done. Her urge to excel started at an early age. I'm told that she got her pilot's license before she could drive, legally that is. And by the time she entered the Air Force Academy, she had more than a thousand flight hours under her belt as a civilian flight instructor. And at the Academy, she dreamed of flying fighter jets, but women were barred from flying in combat then. And when she graduated, she asked to fly fighters anyway. And when she was asked what she wanted to fly, she listed every single jet that the Air Force has. And the Air Force told her no. And basically, that's what she told them right back. You see, she became a test pilot. So instead of flying one fighter jet, she got to fly one fighter after another. You know, lots of pilots only fly one kind of aircraft. But over her career, General Van Ovost has flown more than 30, including Air Force Two. Now that took de decades of discipline, integrity, and quiet determination. These traits have made her an exceptional pilot and an outstanding leader. There's tenacious, and then there's Tenacious, and then there's General Van Ovost. As she says, I really do try to explain to people why it's not a good idea to say no to me. She's the second woman to ever lead a combatant command. She's helped lead an entire service as director of the air staff. She's held multiple joint assignments, including more than two years as vice director on the joint staff. In fact, she's led at nearly every level of command 
most recently at the helm of Air Mobility Command, where she played a key role by supplying planes and personnel for the Afghan airlift. At the height of the NEO, an aircraft was taking off from Kabul airport every 45 minutes. And thanks to, General, uh, to Air Mobility Command and General Van Ovos, no one sat on a tarmac for maintenance or lack of fuel. This kind of real-world combat achievement underscores something crucial. General Van Ovos, in the 21st century, careers like yours are a fighting imperative. We need every Jackie Van Ovos that we can get. And as she likes to say, as young women, women looking up, it's hard to be what you cannot see. So General Van Ovos knows the importance of breaking barriers, of getting results, and of bringing teams together. And she's used to challenges that have never been tackled before. So Jackie, congratulations. I know that you won't miss a beat in this job, but I know that you'll make this outstanding command better and better. Because you always find a way, and so does Transcom. Under your leadership, this command is going to keep the Amer American military moving at the speed of war and with the sweep of the 21st century. I'm incredibly proud of every member of this command, and I know that you're eager to get back to work because the challenges are going to keep coming sooner rather than later. And I know that no matter how big the task is, how steep the hill is, how hard the mission is, Transcom will deliver. Thank you very much, and Godspeed. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And now, it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you General Stephen R. Lyons. Well, welcome. It's uh, so great to see you. Before I even start, though, I want to thank the team that put this together, Colonel Desidu, all the protocol teams, uh, the wing from 375th, Chris Robinson, if you would give them a kind round of applause for the work they've done. And second, if I fix the mic, I'd like to offer a round of applause for TCCC number 14. General Van Ovost. Well, I could be not more pleased than I am right now to welcome Jackie and Alan to the Transcom team. And I'm grateful that the President and the Secretary of Defense selected General Van Ovost for the best job in the Joint Force. I'm excited for the possibilities as General Van Ovos continues to evolve Transcom to maintain relevancy in a rapidly changing security environment. Secretary Austin and Charlene, Chairman Milley, thank you for being here today. I appreciate your kind words and steadfast support of this great Transcom team. And Mr. Secretary, one of my indelible memories was during initial combat operations into Iraq in 2003, when you were the 3rd Infantry Division Assistant Division Commander in the TAC, controlling the fight. I just rolled past your position with a convoy of 5,000 gallon fuel tankers to conduct hot refuel for tanks preparing for the final surge into Baghdad. Your voice 
was an island of calm and a sea of chaos, as Dan Allen likes to say, and it instilled the confidence in all of us that you had the con and inspired us to do our very best. It was the same steady voice I heard during the Afghanistan NEO operations as you calmly and deliberately led us through a few chaotic days. I, for one, cannot imagine our nation's security apparatus without the leadership of legends like Austin and Millie. They are leaders driven by a passion to serve and an ironclad commitment to honor those who came before us, particularly those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And what can become a politically polarizing environment in Washington, D.C.? You both keep us focused on our North Star, our oath to the Constitution of the United States, and commitment to defend this great democracy. Our nation has asked so much of each of them, and they both have experienced the grit of combat in unimaginable ways. Secretary Austin and Chairman Milley have a combined total of over 100 months of combat experience and almost 100 years of service to our nation. I would ask you to please join me in applause for these great, legendary American leaders. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let me also say thank you to the special guests, former Transcom commanders, elected officials, Gold Star families, special friends. Uh, many have traveled so far. I see Honor Blestevez here, traveled long distances, and of course, the biggest thank you of all to the men and women of United States Transportation Command. This uh, Transcom team, the one I've come to love, is a national treasure and a strategic comparative advantage. Transcom has many missions but only one purpose. That purpose is to project and sustain mil military forces globally, to assure friends and allies, deter potential adversaries, and if necessary, respond with combat credible forces to win. The Department of Defense, the global mobility enterprise within, is the envy of the world. However, I'll be the first to tell you that we are not alone in our success. And I'd like to take just a minute to thank our great teammates. I want to thank our state and federal interagency partners like the Department of Transportation, who ensures that our highways, railways, and seaports are able to support national defense needs. I want to thank our vast constellation of allies and like-minded partners that work with us every day around the globe, providing critical access, spacing, and overflight, and expand our impressive global mobility networks. I want to thank, of course, our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, our Marines, our Coast Guardsmen, our civilians and contractors who make up the joint deployment and distribution enterprise. And I especially want to thank our service components and the Joint Enabling Command. They are the Army Surface Deployment and Distribution Command, the Navy's Military Sea Lift Command, the Air Force's Air Mobility Command, and of course, our Joint Enabling Command. And I don't want to leave out the Defense Logistics Agency, who I know is represented here today. While not assigned, they are always such a special and critical part of our great joint supply chain. In a joint combatant command, our strength is the sum of its parts. Our components bring together the best of our respective service cultures and competencies. And thank you to all of our component commanders. I want to thank our industry partners that are here. The defense transportation system is inextricably linked to our commercial partners in the defense industrial base who provide access to valuable global trade networks, transportation capacity, merchant mariners, and so much more. I know Andy Brown, I think, is here today representing the National Trans Defense Transportation Association. I'd also like to thank our incredible headquarters team. I've been blessed with incredible deputies like Admiral Mewborn and General Broadmeadow is here today, senior enlisted leaders like Caruso, Myrick, 
and uh, France and exceptional directors as well as the impressive quarter deck team that seems to rotate around Jerry Goble about once a year. I'd like to thank our Transcom family members who are a critical part of this team and especially my own family, Maureen, Dylan, and Kara, whose sacrifices and support to our success are immeasurable. Thank you. At this very moment, every day, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, there are hundreds of planes, ships, trains, trucks, just as the Secretary and Chairman said, operating around the globe, advancing our security interest by moving military forces and cargo, conducting area refuel operations, and moving patients. Whether deploying an immediate force to respond in crisis, reinforcing with a decisive force, or saving the lives of one soldier, like the special operations soldier who suffered a life-threatening blast injury, injury, needing 100 units of blood. Our aerial medical evacuation professionals generated a C-17, 19-hour flight, two area refuels to ensure that that young soldier could make it all the way from Afghanistan to Texas for the proper level of care. And it's only in the United States of America that we would do that for one soldier. Whatever the, thank you. Whatever the mission, Transcom is proud to support our joint teammates. Even the deadliest pan pandemic in U.S. history did not stop this great command. Secretary Austin talked about the recent Afghanistan NEO, a historic feat to evacuate over 124,000 people to a better future. You may recall a very iconic image. It's the image of REACH 871, a C-17 with 823 Afghans on board. Today, that crew of that incredible mission is with us, and I would like to ask them to stand to be recognized. Great job, guys. I also want to recognize the contingency response group that rapidly deployed to Kabul airport, assumed senior airfield authority, and ran the aerial port, servicing well over 700 jets at a peak of about one every 35 minutes at the peak of the operation. And I know that uh, Colonel Colin McClaskey is here today, I think, as the commander of the CRG who led that force. Colin, if you could stand, I just want to thank you very much for your incredible operation to operate in that aerial port. And you've all read about our great, and I mentioned our great aerial medical evacuation teams, first class, world class. Well, in addition to saving our wounded, they deliver babies. You probably read about that too. And with us today is Captain, Captain Leslie Green, right here from our very own Scott Air Force Base AE Squadron, who delivered an Afghan baby while in flight on a C-17 en route to LUB, LUD Air Base. Leslie, are you here? And last, but certainly not least, also with us today is the Special Operations Qualified Mission Commander for the final C-17 of the Exfil for the last five aircraft out of Kabul airfield. You can probably imagine this was a highly complex operation under blackout conditions with over 80 aircraft stacked overhead in support as the JTF commander and the ambassador took their final steps from Afghan soil. 
Today, Lieutenant Colonel Alex Pelbeth, I believe, is with, with us. Alex, are you here? There he is. And, and, and one more I don't want to forget, actually, none of this, none of this could have been possible without the 618th Air Operations Center synchronizing global mobility operations across the globe, led by Brigadier General Dan DeVoe. Dan, are you here? Thank you. I'll wrap it up, but these uh, great warriors represent a deep bench of highly trained transcom professionals committed to answer the nation's call at a moment's notice. When people ask me, they say, how does Transcom do it? What's the secret to success? And I tell them the truth. We are blessed. We are blessed with incredible people from around the globe. While Maureen and I are very much looking forward to our next chapter, we will certainly miss this great team, but at the same time find great comfort knowing that they will thrive under the leadership of General Van Ovost. To the men and women of Transcom, it has been my greatest honor to serve as your 13th commander. And to all of you here today and connected from remote locations, we thank you all with a grateful heart for your support and friendship. Together, we deliver. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, General Lyons. You may be seated as well. Chief Petty Officer Collier will present Mrs. Lyons with a bouquet of roses on behalf of the United States Transportation Command for her unwavering support to the command, the local community, and Scout Air Force Base. The roses are red and in full bloom, symbolizing our sincere appreciation for her devotion, dedication, and tireless efforts to the men and women of this command and their families. Thank you, Mrs. Lyons. The men and women of the United States Transportation Command will now honor General Lyons with a final salute. The Salute Battery Commander, 2nd Lieutenant Laura Yamamoto, will now present a ceremonial shell casing to General Lyons.
we will now conduct the change of command. Our change of command ceremony is a military tradition deeply rooted in history and dates back to the time of Frederick the Great of Prussia. In that period, military organizations developed flags unique to their organizations with specialized colors and designs. When soldiers followed their leader into battle, their flag was used to provide a vi very visible point around which members of the unit could rally during the battle. To this flag, both commander and soldier of a unit would dedicate their loyalty, trust, and allegiance. The formal change of command ceremony afforded these troops the opportunity to witness a new leader assuming their dutiful positions. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command. Our flag bearer for today's ceremony is the United States Transportation Command's senior enlisted leader, Fleet Master Chief Donald Myrick. At this time, General Stephen Lyons will relinquish command to General Jacqueline Van Ovost. Attention to orders. By authority of the President of the United States, General Jacqueline Van Ovost, United States Air Force, assumes command of United States Transportation Command, Scott Air Force Base, Illinois, effective this date, 15 October, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is with great pleasure that I introduce to you General Jacqueline Van Ovost, Commander, United States Transportation Command. Good morning. It's a distinct honor to stand before you today, joining a phenomenal joint team of soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, guardians, coast guardsmen, civilians, and contractors who project and sustain the joint force in support of our national security objectives. Secretary and Mrs. Austin, General Milley, General and Mrs. Lyons, thanks for your leadership and your trust and confidence to command this team. To the many elected officials, senior statesmen, community leaders, Vice Admiral Mrs. Mewborn, SEAC Colon Lopez, Master Chief and Mrs. Myrick, thank you for your leadership and support. And a special thank you to our Gold Star family members present today for your sacrifice. We will never forget. General officers, flag officers, senior executive service personnel, community leaders, distinguished guests, and our friends. Thank you all for joining us today and for your continued support to the United States Transportation Command, Scott Air Force Base, and the Greater Joint Force. I also want to add my thanks to those who worked so hard behind the scenes to honor General Lyons and I, uh, and Allen and Marine, uh, Colonel Purcell, Colonel Desidu, Chief Young, PA Protocol, Chaplain Sedwick, Color Guard, Side Boys, Band of Mid America, and our narrator, Senior Airman West, the voice. Well done. Thanks for the long hours. So these are not easy to put together and uh, the attention to detail, it's, it's perfect. General Lyons, let me start by congratulating you and Maureen uh, for an extraordinary tour, tour as the 13th Transcom Commander and for the culmination of 38 years of exceptional leadership and selfless service to our nation. So I know you thought you'd be on a beach somewhere a few months ago but you had one final historic logistics challenge to complete before we could let you retire. And although you're ending one chapter here in the St. Louis region, your story is not complete. There are countless professionals in Transcom and across our military who you have developed and mentored throughout your career, 
those generations of leaders are now carrying the torch and following in your footsteps. We're all very grateful to been, have been under your command and to be a part of your great legacy. To Alan and the girls, thank you for your love and support along this incredible journey. The Lord has blessed us each with unique talents that we use to honor and support others. I'm proud of the difference you are all making. Alan, thank you especially for what you do for our family uh, and for all of our military families. To my parents, sisters, extended family, and friends, I'm immensely grateful for your love and support. Thank you all for understanding the many sacrifices and schedule changes a military career brings, uh, but know that I cherish each moment we spend together. We make it count, and I could not do this without you. To many mentors who have developed me along the way, thank you, starting with my 88 best-to-date classmates at the Air Force Academy, to the many senior enlisted leaders, senior statesmen, commanders, and community leaders who have invested precious mentoring time in me, I have this opportunity here because of your efforts. Thank you. Secretary Austin, sir, thanks for officiating today and for your trust and confidence. Your leadership and service to our nation is a great example for all. I assure you that Transcom will defend our nation through rapid power projection and sustainment while continuing to build unity of effort through the strong bonds of our industry partners and our allies and partners. We will also remain committed to our most critical asset, our people. Their adaptive and pioneering spirit ensures that Transcom remains ready to respond and deter. Chairman Milley, thank you for your leadership and dedication to the Joint Force. Transcom remains committed to providing our military leaders a mobility enterprise, ready to deliver the immediate force tonight and the decisive force when needed. To our component commanders, subordinate commanders, and the broader Joint Deployment and Distribution Enterprise, to include the Department of Transportation, MARAD, DLA, and our many commercial partners who answer our nation's call. I am incredibly humbled by the opportunity to lead this team. Thank you for your leadership and dedication to the mission. I'm excited for the relationships we'll forge as we continue to pivot to great power competition and ensure that together we can deliver into the future. To our troops in formation who represent Transcom and the Greater Joint Force, you are our collective strength and our ultimate competitive advantage. It's through your flexible and innovative approach to the changing security environment that Transcom is able to project and sustain military power at strategically relevant speeds, distances, and at scale, at the time and place of our nation's choosing. Ladies and gentlemen, Transcom clearly recognizes our strategic role in the Joint Force. With 85% of the force elements stationed in the continental United States, we understand our mission is critical for national defense and to meet our national security objectives. I also know our role is not always to provide combat power because we deliver hope on behalf of the American people. I've seen our values reflected in the kindness and compassion demonstrated by our teammates executing humanitarian operations around the globe and right here at home. And I have witnessed the respect and appreciation shown by those on the receiving end. There's no denying the fact I am truly inspired by our Transcom team and their commitment to the mission and to each other. As we end our 20-year war in Afghanistan and set our sights on our next challenges, mainly the resurgence of strategic competition against our pacing threat, China, Transcom remains steady as a global integrator for all joint mobility operations. Know that Transcom's number one priority remains constant. Warfighting readiness is the surest way to prevent war. We expect that our freedom of maneuver will be challenged, our logistics lines will be contested at every level, but together with our coalition partners and our commercial teammates, we will flatten the globe and underpin the lethality of our nation's military arm. This joint deployment and distribution enterprise will remain the strategic comparative advantage needed to provide our national leaders with strategic flexibility while creating multiple dilemmas 
for our adversaries. Mr. Secretary, I want to once again thank you for the opportunity to command this outstanding team. I understand this is a privilege that I must earn every day. I am truly humbled to stand amongst such accomplished mobility professionals. It's an honor of a lifetime to be selected to lead the United States Transportation Command as we prepare to meet the challenges of tomorrow, today. Together, we deliver. Thank you, General Van Ovos. Chief Petty Officer Collier will present Mr. Frosch with a memento welcoming him to the United States Transportation Command. Thank you. General Van Ovos, to welcome you to the command, the men and women of the United States Transportation Command would like to present you with your first salute. Thank you, General Van Ovos. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of our service songs. The correct protocol for military members in attendance is to stand at attention for each service song.
ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the departure of our official party. Defense departing. Joint Chiefs departing. Transportation Command, departing. General, United States Army, departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. The members of the United States Transportation Command welcome aboard General Van Ovost and Mr. Frosch as they join America's world-class transportation team. At this time, we will take a 30-minute intermission and return for the retirement ceremony in honor of General Lyons. Thank you.